7.01. Our first order of business is to nominate a moderator for tonight. So, are there any nominations for a moderator? I'd like to nominate Bob Doobie as moderator, because he's done such a fine job all this year. Then there's a second. Are there any other nominations? And we miss it. Is there a motion to close nominations? I move to close nominations. Is the second on that? Second. All those in favor of closing nominations? Aye. Right. All those in favor of Bob Doobie? Aye. Great, come on up, Bob. continued support and thank you all for coming out tonight for this very interesting meeting. Uh, the first order of business is to First order of business to ask the clerk to read the posting of the warrant. Pursuant to the thin warrant, I have notified and warned the inhabitants of the town of Sunderland by posting up attested copies of the same at the town office building, the Sunderland Public Library, and the Sunderland Post Office. Fourteen days at least before day here of as we can do with Alan T. January 10th, 2019, 10.55 p.m. Okay, thank you. Um, one other order of business. In the past, what we've done is ask that the moderator be able to declare a vote by two-thirds without count. The regulations say that it must be a counted vote, and what we would like to be able to do is have the moderator determine whether or not a yea or nay vote is by two-thirds. Now, this does not say that it doesn't have to be a counted vote, because any seven uh, people in the audience can request that it be a counted vote. Tonight's warrant, there are several articles that will require a two-thirds majority. And by having the moderator, giving the moderator the prerogative of declaring the majority just speeds things up. And it doesn't take away the fact that if someone wants to have a counted vote, we can still count it. So I would like to have a motion somewhere. Oh, well, we passed it. Oh, okay. 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 So you don't have to vote on it. It's already been passed. It's part of our bylaws. So if somebody is not satisfied with my declaration of a two-thirds vote, seven people raise your hand and then we'll have a vote. Okay. The last thing we need to do is have a motion to dispense with the readings of the motions since you all have copies of them. Uh, so just again, saves time. So. so moved. Second. Okay, the motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay. Now we can get on with the business. Article one. 
Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 1, please. Okay, any explanation for that? Is there a second to that? This article will allow the, it'll authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire land um, as part of our complete streets project for easements on Hadley Road and Old Amherst Road. As you may recall, uh, last year the town received a grant for $396,000 for complete streets projects. Those projects have been completed uh, with the exception of uh, Hadley Road and Old Amherst Road, where we needed to acquire easements uh, from two of the property owners in order to complete the sidewalk extensions. It also appropriates um, funds to pay for um, damages at fair market value for those properties, and that amount is $2,919 from through cash. Any questions? All right. All those in favor of Article 1, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. <coughs> Article 2. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 2. Second. Motion's been made and seconded for Article 2. Uh, explanation. This article will transfer funds from the stabilization account in the amount of $71,438. Um, recently, the town received a capital grant uh, for improvements on uh, School Street. So the first phase of that project will be engineering and construction of a manhole on School Street. And the second part of that project is going to be conceptual design for some ADA improvements and sidewalk improvements and traffic calming on School Street. Any discussion? Since we're moving money from stabilization account, it requires a two-thirds vote. If there's no discussion, are you ready to vote? Okay. All those in favor of Article 2, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. Declared voted unanimously. Article 3. Mr. Mar Moderator, at this time I'd like to move Article 3, please. Second. Motion's made and seconded for Article 3. Uh, Changes in the bylaws have to be brought before town meeting by the planning board. So, so I'm Steve Schneider. I'm the vice chair of the planning board. Uh, Dana Roscoe couldn't be with us tonight, so um, I'll do my best to present this. Um, so I think our first order of business is going to be to recognize that this has been uh, the handout, the um, stapled together handout you picked up in the back. is slightly amended from what was posted. Uh, the town council had recommended small wording changes. They are really just clarifications from what was posted previously. So I believe that in order to proceed, uh, it's the first order of business to accept as amended in the handout. Okay. Looking for direction. Okay, so we're amending the, the zoning bylaws, and the only articles that are going to be able to discuss are those in italics, or bold, rather. Right. They, they are, uh, all of the new material is marked indirectly underlined, and uh, then the uh, new definitions. Okay. Um, and there are slight wording changes within here that the town council had recommended to what was uh, posted in town offices. Okay. So, that's different from what was posted, therefore, we have to accept them as amended. Right. Okay. Are you following us? Okay. All those in favor, are there any discussion? Okay. Can 
I ask why this was necessary? So. Uh, are you asking about the amendments or are you asking about the bill? Uh, why was it necessary at all? Uh, I'll come to that after we. Uh, I thought we should just take care of business before we start discussing uh, what we have, but I, I'll be happy to do that. I'll make a motion for the amendment. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded to accept the, the amendments to the bylaw as recommended by town council. And those are either underlined or in bold on the handouts before you. So let me make it clear. We are not going to open up the entire zoning bylaw. We are going to open up just what's in the handout. Well, we don't want to stop making sure you, I think what I, I thought what I heard Steve saying is that we are going to be discussing the handout that we have tonight and we're accepting the changes in it as opposed to what was posted. Correct. That's Correct. what we're voting to do. That's so we all we're doing is accepting these changes from what was posted. For the proposed uh, changes. Right. Yes. Yeah. We're not voting on the, the, this, the changes yet. We're just voting on the, the changes to the changes. So Thank you. <laughs> Okay. All those in favor of accepting the amendment, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Okay. Okay, so now, now we can get to the, the real question. Um, okay, so the, we were asked on the planning board to look at our bylaws to see if they, uh, how they might be changed um, now that the state uh, and, the, and the town voted to accept recreational marijuana use. And there are a number of uh, things covered by state regulation uh, that if we do not make any decisions within town, just open up the entire town for the uh, uh, for cultivation and sales and other, other such things with, uh, with marijuana. Um, and so what we don't have in place are a set of guidelines to protect uh, people under certain circumstances. And we'll, we'll just give some examples of, uh, let me give some examples from our meetings of the planning board. We learned about some of the problems in some states, such as Colorado and, and California, where some of the uh, some of the marijuana cultivation has, has produced some problems for neighbors in terms of smells, runoff, um, lights, other things. And so we don't, we don't have a comprehensive set of rules in place to deal with these issues, given that we don't have a set of, the state is just kind of working their way through it. So there's a broad set of um, allowances now by the state for what can be done. Local towns are allowed to um, make some restrictive um, restrictions on those, um, on those uses and on those activities, but we don't have anything in place yet. So what we have drafted here is really what I would call a stop gap, maybe, maybe a literal use of that. There's a gap in the laws right now that um, is, raises, there might be some issues that people would have concerns about the kinds of things that could happen with big uh, in kind of industrial uh, marijuana cultivation as, as has occurred in some places where it has been, become legalized. And so we don't have a very comprehensive way of protecting people's property and neighbors to such uses. So that was our concern and the charge to us was to look at this. We haven't had a lot of time to, on the planning board to revise uh, the rules. We revised the use table to just recognize some of these uses. So if you look on your handout, you'll see the underlined lines, cultivation of marijuana. Um, uh, marijuana processing, so all these places where you see the underlying things for the use table, those are new um, definitions that are being put in there. Then we um, tried to define where uh, various of these activities could take place within town um, in terms of either residential or, so if you look at the, there's village residential, which, which is the center of town, um, near 447 and 116 cross, rural residential, which is much of town, excuse me, village, 
village residential and village, village center, so village residential and rural residential. And then C1 and C2 are our two commercial districts. So much of what we have put in here is largely restricted to uh, C2, uh, which is in the northeast corner of Sunderland. Um, and part of our thinking in this was not necessarily that this should be the final set of restrictions, uh, but you are only allowed to make things less restrictive at, at these town meeting hearings. So we put in what are relative, uh, about as restrictive as we could imagine, and then that's open to amendment to make them less restrictive. We can't go the other way at, at a town meeting. So the reason that the regulations are written as restrictively as they are is just to have something on the books so that we have an opportunity to prevent things from happening in town that maybe we wouldn't like to see happen. So that, that was the thinking here. Uh, there's also a number of these amendments, or part of the amendment is just a set of definitions that would go into our definition table. Um, so you see these marijuana cultivator, establishment, what, what do these things mean? These, these follow largely the state definitions um, so that so we have, uh, have those definitions in our own bylaws. So that's, that's a quick summary of how we got to where we are right now. Um, I'm happy to try to answer questions, or I don't know if the, um, the select board wants to add anything since uh, I think we were, we were asked by the select board to, to come up with some uh, planning board, uh, so zoning bylaws. As I said, I'm happy to try to answer some questions around this or try to spell out some more of our thinking about what we're doing. I do, I see this as something we want to be developing a, a more comprehensive look and see where the best places are for cultivation, what restrictions we want to have around it. If we don't do anything, then what? Well, then, then uh, we don't have any restrictions about where in town some, some of these uh, they may take place, that you might want to restrict to certain parts of town. Um, we don't, the state rules and definitions at the moment, I don't think are very uh, clear about some of the issues that have been raised by other, in other states about uh, some of the, some of the problems of smell and, and can you speak into the mic please? Oh, sorry. <coughs> I'm trying to look at one more direction and speak in the other. But so some of, some, of the, um, some of the concern is that in other states where they have not come up with clear sets of um, <coughs> restrictions for what kind of activities might cause problems for neighbors, neighbors in the town. Um, and so their smell, uh, smell has been raised as a big issue, runoff, uh, lights, uh, other things that we might want to make sure don't, uh, don't make uh, your life in town less pleasant as a result of, of these things coming in. I think they are coming in and just want to make sure we do it properly. Peter. Uh, Peter Gagarin, North Main Street. Uh, I just want to make sure I understand that what I think is being proposed here is actually correct. And what I think is being proposed is that we have a we have two different commercial districts, C1 and C2. C2 is a very small area that essentially is Route 63, the little bit where it goes from Leverett into Sunderland and then right into Montague. Correct. And I think we created that district because we had to deal with adult businesses and we needed a place, we needed to have the ability to have them in town, but we wanted them not to be in the center of town. So That's we right. created the C2 up on Route 63, and so for much of the marijuana, possible marijuana-related businesses, this would put them also only in C2, possibly, that, possibly right. with a special permit. So is that correct? That's correct. Okay, and then what this seems to say is possible to put in C1, which is our general commercial district, which is uh, quite a bit in town, along the main streets, is a retail establishment of less than 2,000 square feet or a testing uh, type of laboratory or something like that. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, and I guess the only 
the question I had was with the, and there were, there were restrictions on where the retail establishment could go in terms of not being within a certain distance of a school or a church or a daycare center. That's correct, and those, those, that language is in there too. Okay. And I think that's the gist of this proposal, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, and I guess the only thing that I wasn't clear on with this is when you say that uh, it could go in a, I think it says in here, a building, this would be a retail outlet, uh, it could go in a building of less than 2,000 square feet. That means that the, you could have a building that has several different commercial establishments in them, and only one of which might be wanting to sell marijuana stuff. Does that mean that that part of the building would be okay if it was less than 2,000, or the whole building, <coughs> which might include other businesses, would have to be less than 2,000? Because it says building, and that, you know, I wasn't sure if that was what the intent was. You know, I, that, that, that's a very good point. It's a subtlety here, I think, in, for any business, because this, if you look, it's not just, we have retail stores of different sizes. Right. I believe the intent, and this goes back, predates my tenure on the board, I believe the intent is really for the store square footage, not, not the entire building, so if we have a multiple retail business building, uh, that, that refers to the individual uh, store. Because I mean, my own view is that we ought to, how shall I say this, we ought to be someplace not hostile and not recruiting such establishments, but we should realize that there are, they're going to be around, and that there are revenue implications, and if we can do it properly, which I think you were trying to do, then maybe we can get a benefit in the long run, and at least this seems to forestall any uh, uh, bad situations in at least the near, near term. That, that's our okay. okay, thank you. Will? Um, the uh, uh, notes have, uh, you know, what Peter was just referring to, the closest property lines to the child, child care center or church. Are those things defined in our definitions in the town? List of definitions, or is there a state definition, or are these? I mean, is it a daycare center, child care center? Is that one that's licensed, or is it like for you know? Or what's the definition of the church? Um, uh, where do we go? So when somebody wants to come in and do this in town, how do they know where the churches are, where the daycare centers are, so they don't try to put it someplace and then find out they can't do it? Yeah, that's a, it's an interesting point. I don't think it's come up when I've been on the planning board or zoning board. In particular, it's, but it's a, you raise a good point. I don't know that it's defined um, in any clear way. Um, I think it is sort of a, it's thought to be sort of general knowledge, and so I'm just gonna, sorry, Dana's not here to be a little more clear about it, but I, I think you're right, that should be spelled out more clearly. the definitions of in our zoning laws already and they differentiate between building and building complex so a building complex or sorry a business complex which is a building or a group of buildings located on one parcel of land which houses more than one business but a building is just the building okay so uh, I think if you dig into our, I hate to say it, but dig into our zoning bylaws enough, you'll find a lot of these little little things that are open to some level of interpretation. Often calling on the zoning board, as we close back there, to try to determine the intent. Um, we've had this, these kind of discussions before. I think, I think you're right to worry about that a little bit, but I think the zoning board is the one to be the arbiter for those things. Yeah, Could we clarify that to substitute a retail space instead of a building? Because, you know, we might all understand that the intent of it is a retail space, but six months from now, a year from now, everybody forgets this. And, it, and you know, there are tax revenues for the town. Right. And, it, and, that, and that's the intent of a retail space less than 2,000 people. Okay, so I, what, I, what I don't want to do is to I, I'm pretty certain that the intent for the use tables 
we don't want to get giant box buildings. Um, so, so that's why there's this definition in terms of square footage of buildings. Now, now in terms of uh, build the spaces within an existing building, I, I think now that's why we're getting into this little uh, difference uh, difference of understanding. So, a retail store. Um, Leave the other ones in buildings, but for the less than 2,000 square foot right. the retail space. Um, and now, you're, are you trying to make a more general statement than just for marijuana retailer? Just for marijuana retailer. Where it says, where it says, building 2,000 square feet or less. I think the intent is you want a space that sells marijuana for less than 2,000 square feet. Um, I think what, I, I agree with you. I think that's, that's our main intent. I, although I do think the implications of having more than one retailer, if you've been to Northampton recently, uh, in, in the same space might raise some, some concerns also. So I, 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 I'm a little reluctant. If you're proposing an amendment, I would not object to it, but I, I do think there's gonna be complications about multiple businesses in the same retail space, just given what I've seen happening locally. I mean, just, just in terms of the, the volume of business going through. So basically what you're saying then is the intent of the bylaw as proposed by the planning board is to have each marijuana establishment that sells marijuana to have a separate building. I, I don't think that was actually considered one way or the other by the planning board, so I, that's why I've said I wouldn't object to a, a change uh, like Bruce is proposing. Uh, but I, I don't... I, I haven't thought through the implications, so I, I'm reluctant to deep into that and not, not having thought through that. Yeah. Russell Lane, and uh, Silver Lane, uh, although uh, I'm old, I still maintain a medical license in the Commonwealth method. Uh, I'm puzzled to think that we're uh, talking about marijuana, but I didn't know that we had okayed any marijuana growing in the town of Sun. We haven't okayed it, but the state has, and so it's, it's basically we have to decide if we want to be more restrictive than the state at this point. The Commonwealth is led the way. Yes. Okay. They don't want us. I'm concerned about the weather school and I want some protection for our wonderful community at North Star, which is a non school and I don't know how to <laughs> we we when we were uh, writing this language the we thought Excuse Can you repeat the question? Um, she's, the concern is about what North Star and was whether it is considered a school as a as a non-school, I guess you called it. Uh, um, but I I think under our under our not very uh, definite guidelines, we would consider that a school. So I'm not. You don't you don't you don't like that. So please please speak. It only meets four days a week. Um, it's specifically not a school, and so young people, whether they're in that kind of situation, or they have some club, or some gaming place they go to, or whatever, that is a location, um, that maybe we need to think about protection for those kinds of groups that don't fit under church or school category. So the state said church or school, and I'm, we're just basically copying that language, I think, in our bylaws. And so I guess, uh, what would, if it's not a school, then how do we, how would you add it to the bylaws if we were going to? I would like to see some, some protection for young people who are gathered for, um, for, for a formal purpose or something that doesn't limit it to Cool. I mean, it's, 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 it's
No, I'm just looking for good words to, to use. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just trying to think better. What are the right, better, what are the right words we could insert that would be general enough but not uh, overly specific? Uh, can I ask Steve Kroll to, because I think he might be able to help us with the zoning board. Could I ask, Steve Kroll might be able to comment on this. Well, I'm Steve Kroll. I'm the uh, chairman of the zoning board. Uh, I think it's important to note here that uh, we're, we're proposing to be very restrictive of where uh, any sort of uh, retail activity or cultivation activity of marijuana will occur. And each and every one of those rare instances, it says SP, which means it requires a special permit from the zoning board. Uh, and the zoning board uh, you know, would, would look at this very carefully, we have a lot of discretion. Uh, you're talking about definitions of the North Star. Uh, you know, that, that's, you know, my, my feeling would be when we looked into it, we would find out that that would, yes, that would be a school. And that would be, uh, uh, you know, it, it would be required, any retail outfit or any cultivation would have to be uh, a certain amount of feet away from that. Uh, I would just caution, uh, I see kind of a, a slippery slope of, well, we want to modify, well, we're going to call it, you know, retail space versus building. I think, you know, you're trying to follow the same form that we have for business uses. We don't call it business space. Uh, I, I, again, it's going to be a special premise. The zoning board would be able to interpret uh, ramifications if a uh, retail uh, marijuana uh, operation wanted to go into a, 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 a building that's a complex that has other, other businesses with it. We would consider that. We would deal with that. I don't think you really want to get too far in the weeds of trying to specify things and you're, you're going to box yourself in or create a, a, a situation that's untenable for the zoning board to deal with. So. I mean, I, I like the idea, the approach that the planning board has taken here, as far as uh, you know, removing you know marijuana activities from other business uses, and then making its own section for business for for, for marijuana uh, uses. And again, it's going to be under a, a special permit, and uh, the zoning board would have you know would, have, would conduct public hearings. We would investigate all these things. And, you know, I, I think, you know, in terms of what you want to do, I think this is, uh, I think what, what the planning board is proposing in terms of the, the use table is a, is, you know, is a good way to do it. I got some other Yeah, so the first um, point under extensive uses, uh, agriculture or forestry, except Cultivation of marijuana um, doesn't seem like you're allowed to. A citizen of Sunderland can't grow marijuana. But by state law, I believe I don't don't remember the exact names, but any any person now in the state can grow uh, some limited amount. Uh, cultivation would be an extensive use. That I, does anybody here know the state rule on how many plants you can grow? Six plants per person in the six, household. Yeah. <laughs> six plants. So six plants. Just saying. So there we go. So anybody, anybody is allowed to do that. How big is your garden? Now, what, what I think is a little different here about cultivation is, is you have to understand the state also has very um, specific rules about you know fencing and uh, protection. Um, that require, you know, guarded fences or indoor structures, which become much more like, when you look at uh, Colorado and California, different places, these become much more like uh, industrial complexes. They're not, it's not a, a field of marijuana growing on the outside of Edward. Um, and they're very intensive because the investment involved, so they, these are typically run um, year round at, at very high level of use, which, which, is, which was our concern. Those can be quite different from what we think of as um, uh, fields of grain or something. Uh, we get a question right in the back. 
to yeah, the yeah, entire China. Uh, Jennifer Uncles, I just wanted to add a piece of information that might not be useful because I couldn't find it for sure, but I thought the state word included where children gather regularly, in addition to schools and library or church. Um, okay. So I couldn't find that for sure in the state. Okay. Well, certainly we would not um, supersede anything the state says. We can we can make it more restrictive. If that, the state already says that, then we're not going to make it less restrictive as far as not including that language. Yeah, I wonder if you could add agricultural use parcels less than five acres, except uh, cultivation of marijuana. Does that mean that, and you've got a special permit, does that mean that if I had three or four acres behind my house and I wanted to use it as agricultural, I'd have to get a special permit? I believe that uh, by definition, and <coughs> Steve Carl can remind me if I've got this wrong, by definition, anything smaller than five acres does not automatically qualify for the state agri agricultural exemption rules. Um, and so I think that's just, that language, we're leaving out that, the language is only except cultivation of marijuana. That language has not changed at all from what's there before, and I believe that's just comporting with what the state says is, is the fact. Four acres. You hear my house the river. That I need a special permit to farm it. The way this reads here. And that's kind of bogus. So that, that can come from, I think uh, what that comes what that comes from, and I'll I'll, I'll speak uh, in a general sense that neighbors of people who have uh, have a yard and might want not want their neighbor to be raising pigs or doing something that uh, they regard as a residential neighborhood or whatever they don't like that gives them an opportunity to ask the building inspector to to bring it forward and then to, as Steve Cole was just explaining, then there's a special permit before the zoning board to review and maybe perhaps, maybe uh, come up with restrictions around that. But th that's no, that is not a change to existing, um, existing bylaws. The, the only added language there is except cultivation of marijuana. So if you want to change that, I, I invite you to come forward to the planning board or, and or the zoning board to discuss, you know, releasing that restriction, but I think some neighbors feel that that's a protection for them from somebody doing something that might make their home property value less or their, their enjoyment of their property less. Anyone else? with this because it is so new to the state but I just wonder if we're being and it's hard to know but I wonder if we're being too restrictive on the cultivation because we're only allowing it in the C2 district in buildings up to 10,000 square feet and so that's basically like for the industrial size uh, growing but it's my understanding from states like Colorado and out west that that's like a bare minimum size for industrial size growing. So I think the larger industrial operations wouldn't even be interested in trying to establish something in our C2 district because it's just not even big enough for you know the corporate marijuana um, companies. So I wonder if like we're essentially with the zoning, we're, kind of, we're saying, yeah, it's allowed in this district, but we're essentially saying it's not allowed because I don't think the corporate interest would move in and I'm not sure it would be afford affordable or feasible for a smaller company to try to buy land there and um, cultivate there. And I also feel like with all the, all the rules set in the state laws with community outreach meetings and agreements with the town, and I wonder if we could make more of it under special permit so that we could do a case-by-case -case review if somebody wanted to cultivate marijuana outside of the C2. So, so I think the procedure here tonight would be if you want to propose, for example, um, changing um, 
lost my place here, sorry. Uh, cultivation of marijuana under business uses to under C1 from no to special permit is, I think, pretty much what you're proposing. So I, you know, I, I'm not gonna say so, so you can't propose that, but I, I think that might have more impact on people's homes because that is a residential, that is residentially zoned. So there are many more homes in that district. Does so, it kind of depend on the location now? I mean, there's greenhouses here, not that close to my house, but I can see the lights at night. And I don't know if it's really bother me. I don't know what I want to do. And I think it would depend. You know, personally, yeah. I, I would not I, want to have I, lights. I Right. Um, you know, so personally, I would not like to see more lights in Sunderland. I like the fact that we have nice, nice dark skies at night. But um, you know, so so I, I, I welcome you to propose. Well, I'm all for that too. There's also, and I understand that this part is very new to the regulations as well as having outdoor facilities, which I know presents other issues with security. But um, I think that would be a good solution. Um, I will say that of all the things in the use table that I thought might be uh, proposed for an amendment tonight, I, I thought C1 turning to a special permit there might be one of them. Uh, I, but I, I don't know. I, I, I thought people, or maybe rural residential as well. Are, I don't. Are you concerned that the Attorney General won't approve the these if, if they're as written? Because that's we, what my concern is that you're not allowing cultivation with this. I, we passed it by the town attorney who looked it over and thought it, you know, except for some very slight changes, wording thought was, it was okay. Um, and then in terms of procedure, town meeting, we can't become more restrictive at town meeting, so we couldn't have put that a special permit and changed our minds to say no at this, at this meeting. That would, that would not be legal. So we, we went with the more restrictive version, um, and there is the opportunity to, uh, to have an amendment here tonight to make it less restrictive than what is here. Okay, then I propose an amendment that we change the C2 under cultivation of marijuana. Excuse me. If you're going to make an amendment, could you please put it in writing? That's 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 been on modus operandi for years. You can have a motion from the floor. Yeah, no, you can't. Yeah. It's just just write it down. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Mr. Moderator. The, the question that Mr. Dickinson had uh, asked about growing five acres of marijuana in his backyard, um, the, according to this, the CCC, which is a Cannabis Control Commission, has uh, topped it off at 100,000 uh, square feet. So, so you could only grow two. So you could only grow 2.3 acres, not not the five acres. Um, this, this, this and, and, and they said they, they what's that? I, I didn't hear you, Richard. It says agricultural use parcel less than five acres except cultivation of marijuana. So that's you know vegetables. Well, I, I'm just I'm just trying to read off from this, I, and, well, I, I and, and, and on on this it says that the Cannabis Control Commission has limited. To 100,000 square feet. And the reason they did that is so that we wouldn't get agribusiness coming in and they grow Massachusetts to sell in other towns. Right. And well, I, I understand that. <clears throat> but my point is this is special permit, even if I wanted to grow vegetables on less than five acres, the way this special permit is, because it says to accept cultivation of marijuana, and I need a special permit. It's the second one down. Yes, let me make a clarification, Rick. It's my understanding that we're not changing that part of the existing bylaw. The five acres requiring a special permit is already part of the zoning bylaw. The only thing that we're changing in there is taking the ability to grow marijuana out of it. If you have five acres now or less than five acres, you're still required to get a special permit. That's the way. That's on the books that way. Yeah. That's yes. the books that way. So, if, if I, do you want to answer that, Steve? 
Well, uh, I just want to actually amplify something that, that Steve said. Uh, you know, that, that special permit required for agricultural uses for a parcel under five uh, acres has typically been for people who want to have uh, chickens or, or maybe horses on their property, the properties under five acres. Uh, that's, that's where that comes in now. Uh, and you know, I want to also confirm that uh, the wording, like you said, of the agricultural uses, uh, parcel under five acres, that is already, that's in our zoning bylaws now as it is. Uh, you're just uh, trying to, the change you're making is just to say, with the exception of uh, cultivation of marijuana. Um, the only board is always, I mean, we're, we, we get to deal with some interesting cases and when we take a look at the laws and we try to interpret them as best we can, uh, you know, I, I can see the situation you're talking about, about an agricultural use uh, of farming actually would require a special permit for a, 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 a parcel under five acres now that the board hasn't taken that point of view, but we've never really had a case brought to us to uh, that someone's needed a special permit for that. Um, you know, it, it, that is its own separate issue, and maybe, I mean, for the purposes of tonight's, you know, what we're trying to do here with, with uh, generating and adopting some bylaws for marijuana, uh, that's that whole bit that you're, the, the scenario that you point to, I think is outside of that. And that would be like, like uh, Steve was suggesting, if that's something that, uh, you know, the, the planning board could take a look at, maybe look at the wording of that, that's a separate issue. Uh, I think we, we want to, you know, sort of sep separate and steer clear of that. That would be my suggestion. <laughs> Mr. Moderator, if I may continue. Um, one of the things that I, I'd like to sometimes it's hard, but the, back in 2016 when that was the marijuana question was put before the town, the town voted 70% to uh, change the law to allow, to allow for marijuana use and, and to sell. I mean, I guess you could say that um, in, in a lot of, lot of communities are struggling with the whole uh, issue about the sale of marijuana um, in, in the communities, but our residents overwhelmingly voted uh, to support that and use in our community. I, I would say that the one thing with, with the, the article is that the town, um, without having an article in place, you are that now subject so if we vote it down this evening then tomorrow someone technically could come in and, and say they'd like to put up a cultivation center um, in your backyard and it could go in the only the only thing that would stop that right away at least is that the um, there's still a host agreement that's worked out with the executive board in this case, the board of selectmen, so they would come in and we would talk about lighting and all that kind of stuff in, a, in the host agreement. Uh, from the conversation this evening, it appears that every that there's concerns with the way that the bylaw is written right now. Um, we always have the option of passing it, on, and then by either through work by the planning board and or through a citizen's petition, we can change that law at the annual town meeting um, or get it. But it's kind of, in, in personally, just from what is written right there, and I, I, I have a, a concern about only limiting it to a gravel pit on, on Route 63 <coughs> that's not readily accessible to a lot of people. So, so I was, I would think that we could do a better job of writing that bylaw to include areas and make 
put uh, safeguards, proper safeguards in place so that if someone wanted to put a cultivation center in, the, the safeguards are there so that we don't have a, the smell of skunk blown into someone's house next door. So I think there's stuff that we can do, but it's not easy. And I think the planning board needed to put something on the books and get us started. I don't personally think it's probably the best solution right now. Probably Stephen would probably agree with that, but it allows us to start the conversation. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Move the question. Well, we have a, an amendment here. I think we're yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. okay. okay. amendment is under the section cultivation of marijuana building up to 10,000 square feet change N to SP under the C1 zone. So what it's saying is you would be able to grow marijuana in the C1 zone, which if I remember right, is basically 116. Much of 116, basically. 116 from the center of town up to? No, it's, it's three sections along there, but, but they're. Oh, okay, okay. So. That's building rate of 2,000 to 5,000? No, that's a 10. This is for cultivation, so this would be. This is for cultivation of marijuana. Which, which would take place in a building, building. up to 10,000 square feet. Okay, 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 I'm gonna run. Okay. She's yep. proposing to change it to C1 as well. So that would still require a special permit, which would still require going before the zoning board to review it. Yeah. Um, Is there a second to the amendment? Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Mr. Moderator. <laughs> by the, the rules that govern us, that's how are you going to allow that amendment? That's a big jump. Yeah, I, I just, it, it's well, a one of the moderator's choice. One of the things in terms of when it comes to zoning and the moderator's role in the meeting is that generally you are not allowed to make something. Well, I guess this is going to be all right because it's less restrictive time. Yeah. Yeah. There's two things that govern it. You can't make an amendment that makes it more restrictive. Oh, excuse me. You, you can't make amendments that make an amendment more restrictive. And what you're proposing is actually going to make the zoning bylaw less restrictive. So in that case, the amendment would be allowed. So we're free to discuss the amendment and I saw a number of hands. Mary, I have a question. Um, C1 area, are there residences there? Are there partially residential? It's partially residential, it's, uh, so yes, I, I mean, the answer is there are, but it would go before the zoning board and in each instance that one of these would propose, it would be a large building, um, so it would have to be something that we would look at in each case. Follow-up question, um, are there any uh, regulations yet on the um, amount of space or barriers that need to, that are recommended for Need to be between residences and the commercial um, marijuana, whatever they're doing. I, I think any commercial business uh, has, if you look in the bylaws, there are a lot of uh, uh, barrier, barrier issues, lighting issues, a number of things, smell, other things that are all examined by the zoning board already. already. That's just part of the general uh, set of bylaws. 
Larry? Yeah, I just recommend at this time accepting this as proposed rather than trying to modify it at this point. I think Tom's point that may not be perfect, but it's a good, we're looking for restriction and control of our community. The later time that we want to loosen it, we can consider it more carefully. I think, remember, there's the sort of notion it seems in the air that a special permit is, oh, well, we'll stop it there. But as I understand, a special permit isn't where you stop something, it's where you make people put hedges around it or control hours of lighting and that sort of thing. It's a bigger step than we may be looking at right now, and I think this is a good time just to uh, respectfully uh, reject this event. I'd like to, uh, this is Jake Bowerman, five South Silver Lake. Go ahead. I'd like to agree with your suggestion. And uh, my, my uh, question was, uh, if you could repeat this again with the motive of what the modification is for the amendment so that I can understand exactly where on 116 this is potentially going to uh, take place. Because as I imagine 116, there are lots of residences, and it's fine if you're not one of those people, but there are a lot of people that may live there that are not here, and I don't think it's a good idea to, you know, pass something that's going to affect them without their knowledge, and then you come back to it later, it's, 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 it's a problem that we don't need to create. Understood. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. Steve, do you want to describe it? Well, uh, I just want to point out something. Uh, you know, you, know, you, know you, uh, you sort of imply that uh, you know, special permits are where we go and suggest edges and stuff like that. You know, special permits can be denied. We have denied and I'll, I'll tell you that the, uh, the zoning board is uh, very much concerned about business and commercial uses where there are abutting residences. So, uh, you know, this is to say that uh, you know, special permits uh, you know, are, are not a here. And uh, we do take a lot of discretion and a lot of concern. Uh, one of the things, one of the criteria we look at is the impact on the neighborhood. Uh, and if there's abutting residences, and I mean, we've had situations where we had, you know, you get a special snowball gas station on, on 116, uh, and there are abutting residences behind it on Silver Lane. So, uh, we, you know, there's, uh, I'm just saying that there, there's a lot of circumstances where there are, uh, you know, residences nearby where commercial ventures are, are, are If I could just make a clarification, somebody asked where the C1 is. My recollection is, is that the C1, three sections, from the center of town, or from the bridge really, up this way to about where we are in the school. The second section is down where the shops are, uh, the dove's nest and all of that, and then, the third set is basically from Plum Trees Road south to the town line. And I can't remember what the setback is there, whether they're three, 300 feet from the road or 500 feet. But what I'd also point out is currently it is possible by special permit to build any 10,000 square foot retail um, building or a building in that, that same C1 district, but it would again require a special permit. So uh, putting up a, an agricultural 10,000 square foot building with proper safeguards against smell and lighting and other things is not much different from what is currently allowed in the zoning. Like you put up a, um, a retail business of, of 10,000 square feet with a special permit. I'll also point out that uh, retail store uh, building greater than 2,000 and up to 5,000 is a yes in the uh, commercial one and commercial two, not even a special permit. So in those situations where uh, the, uh, there may be residences nearby, the, the uh, bylaws and the use table as it is now 
uh, allows, as of yet, a retail store that's between 2,000 and 5,000 square feet. What we're suggesting here for a marijuana uh, retailer, uh, we're actually going to put a you know, special room on We're going to have more control. So, uh, you know, you know, the conflict between the commercial district and residential districts, uh, I mean, that's, that's, that's sort of, you know, age long and uh, you know, so many more deals with them than needed. So. Well, yeah, I, I would just agree with the other ideas about not voting in favor of the amendment, but encourage the uh, person who's offering the amendment to go to the planning board with the idea. It's a wonderful board. They really hash through things, uh, and then public can come and interact with them and get some feedback. And then any kind of changes to this uh, use table could be presented by the planning board. Um, after having a lot of discussion over it, working things out, and thinking about things, and sort of the role playing, scenario playing, and come up with all kinds of surprises when you do that. You know, when I came here tonight, I figured this thing would fly through. But after listening to everybody and the discussion that's going on, I think we need a lot more information on the whole thing. And what what the planning board is trying to do tonight is to is at least get something on the books. And then, like, like the other two gentlemen have said, then we can go back and re-look at it and discuss it further. And I think we need a lot more input from the townspeople on it. Because this is just a small part of the people that are concerned. So, you know, as, as far as the amendment goes, you know, I think we should defeat the amendment, look at it afterwards so we can get a whole bigger picture of what's going on, what these facilities might look like. Um, you know, and, and what the concerns of, you know, of others of present facilities that are growing it have. And then we can be, have a more informed discussion and a more, make it a more informed decision. And, and, uh, Dale Schwartz, I agree with what you just said about um, not supporting that amendment because I think there's a potential for a lot of unintended consequences that are not clear to us yet. And um, at the same time, I, I don't know, I'd be curious to know what the intention is behind the amendment. The reason why you proposed it. Yeah, I, when, and I, I have a lot of, you know, mixed feelings about the legalization of marijuana in the state in the first place. But when I looked at the regulations, I thought about it, it seemed like we're not allowing cultivation at all. And I know that under, because we passed marijuana legalization, our town voted for marijuana legalization, we have to allow these things in our town without, or we have to jump through a lot of hoops for banning it. So I feel like we're basically not allowing cultivation by putting it into one small district and limiting it in size. So I feel like this allows us to at least we're saying it is, we would allow cultivation if we allowed this amendment, and I feel like it's still strict enough under the special permit. As other speakers have noted, the special permit takes a lot of factors into consideration, and if you take a look at the zoning for the bylaw chart, there are a lot of things under there that maybe you wouldn't want to have them. So see, maybe you wouldn't want to have near you or in certain areas along 116, but they are technically allowable. So this would be just adding one more of those to consider. Mr. Moderator, I would like to move that we uh, move the question on the amendment. Okay, is there a second to that? Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded to move the vote on the amendment, which means that since it's been made and seconded, that we have no choice but to vote on it. Vote on the amendment? On the amendment. Just the amendment. Could and the amendment, it, as read, basically indicates that we want to move uh, cultivation to, to allow it in C1 as well as C2. So, by special, special, special permit. Right. Okay. 
Again, this is going to require a two-thirds vote to pass. Okay. All those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Nay. I'm going to declare that it doesn't pass by voice vote. Okay, I think that one of the things that you should do is take the suggestion that was made and take a look at it, have input into the planning board so that if you're going to revise it, then we're going to have a much more comprehensive uh, permit process than we now have. Okay, are we ready to vote on the main motion? Okay, the main motion is basically what has been presented in the handout. Okay, all those in favor of accepting the amendments to the bylaws as presented in the handout, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Okay, I'll declare it passes unanimously. Well, there was one nay, that doesn't make it unanimous. I have the prerogative, I have the prerogative of not hearing it. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd have to count. <laughs> I don't think that's fair. Okay, Article 4. Mr. Moderator, would you like to move Article 4? Second. The motion's made and seconded for Article 4. Explanation. Mr. Moderator, according to Mass General Law, Chapter 64, and Section 3, uh, cities and towns by the uh, uh, town meeting vote, in our case a town meeting vote, can put an excise tax up to 3% on the uh, uh, selling of marijuana in the town of Summer. It's a sales tax, basically a sales tax. Uh, if you've been following what's happening in the towns around us, when it comes to in imposition of this sales tax, most of the towns have imposed the sales tax on it. In Amherst, they've actually gone further and proposed that every person that's granted a license to sell retail marijuana also has to kick in $25,000 per year to, an edge, to the town to be used for educational purposes related to the use of marijuana. Uh, the question that I would have with the Board of Selectmen, even though I'm probably stepping out of line here a little bit, is why has not the town of Sunderland opted to go that route? Mr. Moderator, that would be uh, uh, subject to the, uh, what they call the uh, the host, host community negotiations that would be uh, carried out. Okay, so if somebody comes to you with a requesting a license, you could impose that educational fee so on it at that point? We could negotiate that, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, any discussion on Article 4? Bowerman, South Civil Lane. I have one question. Is it that the three percent is the maximum that we said we could do. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, it is. Thank you. Okay. Question: um, Would that money come directly to the town? It does. It goes to the what they call the general, the town's general fund. It's no different than like the hotels or the extra meals taxes. It's exactly like that. All right. All those in favor of Article 4, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Declare it unanimous. <coughs> Article 6. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move. Article 5. Oh, Article 5, excuse me. Second for Article 5. That's 
pretty self-explanatory. Where does the additional cost come from? Mr. Moderator, the uh, Franklin County uh, Technical School has put together a capital, a capital program. Um, and then when we put the budget together, this is one of the things that was, uh, that was over, but we thought it was in their, their full budget and was not. So at this time, we're coming back to ask for the appropriation which they put in $9,708.58 for capital improvements at, they have a, a long-term plan up at the, the tech school. Okay. Any discussion? Is this a one-time assessment or is this an ongoing capital assessment that they'll be that'll be on the warrant every year? Thanks. 2034. Okay. All those in favor of Article 5, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Declare unanimous. Article 6. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 6, please. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Uh, available funds. Where's the available 6, funds? 6,000 from free cash. From free cash? Yes, yeah, that's right. Okay. Mr. Moderator, if I may, please. Uh, basically, Massachusetts um, this year is joining the rest of the country, believe it or not. Um, up until this time, Massachusetts, uh, they had a Department of Labor that enforced through municipality and state higher education, et cetera. They had our own, we had our own set of rules. Um, Massachusetts now has adopted the OSHA standards so we, we're going by OSHA standards. The, the fire chief discussed with us um, a few times, it appears that the moral OSHA requirements is that there's a one-time physical that his firefighters, um, active firefighters need to take. At this time, he has 10 firefighters that would need to have this physical. There's only two places, I believe, in the state that offer the physical, and each physical costs about $600. There's a conversation that we're having. Um, we had a, a meeting, a conversation on a meeting, but about a conversation with the uh, person from the Department of Labor. They said they don't really know if it's actually mandatory at this time or not. Our fire chief, uh, Steve Benjamin, has gotten many different opinions. I think he's gotten four different opinions if he had or should have it or not. And it have to be done by February 1st. So at this time, we would like to keep the $6,000 in the line. If Stephen needs to uh, send his firefighters to the, to the physical, he will have the money to do it. If not, if it can be done at a later time, we'll have the money to do it. And if they don't have to do it at all, we turn the money in. But we think it's a, a prudent way to go appropriate to six thousand dollars if his firefighters need that. We, we're actually the our board has said why why are we only doing it once? Why is it done every year? But um, that that's for another discussion. Okay. Any discussion? So Bob, does the article now say six thousand dollars for free cash, or does it say a sum of money from available? So, thank you, Liz. What, at this time, I'd like to make an amendment to the article, and the sum of money I'd like to make at six thousand dollars, and it would be from free cash. Second. Thank you, Liz. The motion is made and seconded to change the sum of money to six thousand dollars. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye, aye. aye. All those opposed, nay. Okay, now we can vote on the main motion. Okay, all those in favor of Article 7 as amended, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, unanimous. Article 8. We're on 6, we've got to go to 7 o'clock. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me.
Excuse me, I wrote it down wrong here. Excuse me. Article right, 7. I, I, um, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to uh, pass over Article 7 at this time. Okay. We're passing over that. No action. Correct. Article 8. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 8. Second. Five thousand some odd dollars for cash for the senior center. Any discussion? Mr. Rock moderator, if I may please. Ba basically we had a the uh, we had a, a complete accounting long overdue at the senior center. Presently uh, the, the senior center total budget is about fifty two thousand two hundred and seventy four dollars, give or take a few cents. Um, and Deerfield pays 50% and Whiteley and Sunderland um, divide up the other 25% of these. After, again, we were looking at how, how the senior center is funded. We were funding, we were funding through many, many um, state and local federal grants that unfortunately are no longer, they're no longer, can, we can depend on those happening. So what, what we and, and also we found out that there are certain things like the uh, senior center directors on um, health and um, life insurance were not carried in the budget. So the town of Deerfield was having to pick up the whole thing. I was not opposed to that. I thought Deerfield was a nice <laughs> presence of the town of Sunderland, but the residents of Deerfield don't agree with me, unfortunately. Um, so. And we also, we have a position, it's called an outreach position. And it's a 12-hour position that was funded solely through grants. We, we believe, the Board of Oversight, that the uh, outreach is a critical um, position at the Senior Center to, to get out in the community, to, and not only to, to talk to people about what we do, but there, there's a, a segment of our population that needs assistance that they can't get to the senior center. So we, we wanted to we wanted to bring that in line also. So after after the uh, looking at the county and the whole process and think that we are missing, um, we found out that the town of Sunderland and Whiteley needed to, to pony up an additional five thousand dollars. So our assessment would be a little over eighteen thousand dollars for the seniors. Uh, Whiteley would be eighteen thousand in the town of here for will pick up 36,000. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Tom. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of Article 8, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Article 9. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 9. Second. Mm -hmm. some, some new geothermal pumps for the Sunderland Public Library. Any discussion? I believe something's coming down now. Catherine Hand, Director of the Sunderland Public Library. Um, this is funds are to, um, to pay for repairs that already have been done to the Sutherland Public Library's um, geothermal pumps and then the HVAC system. We were very grateful to receive a grant from Sunderland Energy Committee's um, Green Communities Grant to pay for a building automation system in the library, which really simplified the maintenance and understanding of how each of the 16 heat pumps in the library actually work. Um, however, this initial project did not include the geothermal pumps that actually power the heat pumps. And so um, throughout 2018, we had a series of total system failures with our HVAC system. Um, and ultimately, it was discovered that the programming of the system was essentially the geothermal pumps and the heat pumps were coming back online at the same time, which did not give enough time for the geothermal pumps to actually get 
anything pumped into the heat pumps, which are shutting them all down. So essentially, we needed these funds in order to, number one, add the geothermal pumps onto the monitoring system so I know what's happening with them and that they're functioning correctly. And number two, to reprogram the system so that the geothermal pumps have enough time to power up and then the heat pumps can then um, do their thing. Happy to answer any questions. Could you tell me what a VFD is? <laughs> it's one of those mechanisms. Um, yeah, Aaron can in the back, actually. It's a variable, variable, yeah, frequency, a variable drive. frequency drive. It controls the speed of the pumps. It allows a motor that can run from 0 to 3600 or 0 to 1800 RPM. It allows the, uh, the pump and motor to operate in, the, in its most efficient uh, RPM. So it does need to be at the 1800 or 3600. It runs at 1500 or 1200. So it gives the best. It gives the best efficiency of that pump. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor of Article Nine, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Okay. Before we adjourn. Thank you all for coming out, and thank all the boards for their input, and the planning board for taking the time to put this together. Mr. Moderator. The motion is made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to make a motion to dissolve.